Industry changes society. The Industrial Revolution brought changes in many areas of life. These changes took place in Europe, North America, and elsewhere by the 1860s. Industrial growth still changes the way we live today. Cities grow in size. One important change was the rapid growth in the size of cities. Urbanization is the movement of people from rural areas to cities. A nation is urbanized when most of the people live in the cities. Britain was the first uh, country to become urbanized. City populations grew in other parts of Europe and in the United States. Why did cities grow so quickly? As farms used more machines, fewer workers were needed. To find jobs, many rural workers headed to nearby cities hoping to find work in new factories. What was, indus what was industrial life like? Before the rise of industry, a person's place in society was set at birth. Few were able to rise to higher positions. The growth of industry, however, brought new opportunities. In Europe, wealthy factory owners were able to live like nobles. They had several homes and many servants to wait on them. Less wealthy people, such as managers, lawyers, doctors, and engineers, formed the industrial middle class. Some of them could afford servants and find homes. The growth of industry and cities also created a large working class. The growing working class was made up of people who toiled in factories and mines. Their lives were much harder for those in the, uh, than those in the upper and middle classes. Entire working class families, children as well as adults, had to work to make enough money to live. Working conditions varied uh, from barely acceptable to dreadful. Hours were long, up to 16 a day, six days a week. Injuries were common in hot, dirty, unhealthy factories and mines. Many children lost f fingers and limbs. Death and injury often occurred. Living conditions in the cities were often wretched. However, Workers still flocked to cities to fill jobs because they could not find work on farms. Despite the low pay and long hours, most workers had better lives and more money than uh, when they lived in the country. They found that the city life had benefits. The city offered leisure time opportunity. These included perks, parks rather. These included parks, education for adults and children, concerts, libraries, museums, and sports. Women discovered a new independence. As time passed, working conditions did improve. Some reformers, including many religious people, were able to better lives the lives of workers. Hours um, were reduced for female and young workers. Living conditions in cities remained very unhealthy, but some improvements did occur. New laws passed that made factories safer and reduced population and unclean food and water in cities. I'm now reading from the side, the way it was. Young people in, working condition in mills. For children working in mills and factories, the day began very early, often before dawn. A regular shift at five in the morning. Children who arrived late for work usually did so in tears. They knew that their wages would be cut and that they would be severely punished. Children arrived uh, for work hungry but breakfast was not allowed until eight or nine in the morning. Breakfast usually considered, consisted of oat cakes and cans of boiled milk and water. Children ate their breakfast standing up, still working at their stations. Once a year, they were served cheese, cheese and brown bread for a special dinner. Uh, because the children were tired and hungry, they often became drowsy while working. When this happened, the overseer woke them up by dunking them head first into a vat, a vat of cold water. Many children developed breathing problems and became sick with an illness known as mill fever. The air the children breathed contained, was contaminated with dust, grease, oil, and gas. Okay. Life changes for women. The Industrial Revolution greatly changed women's lives. At first, it was believed that woman's place was in the home. Her job was to raise the children and do the household tasks. Women had, few, had fewer legal rights than men. During the 1800s, women worked to change their position and find new roles. 
the workplace continued, uh, the workplace played a major role in changing the position of women. Women found jobs in both industrial and government services. There were also more opportunities for education. A drop in family size during the 1800s helped to change the lives of women as well. During the 1800s, women began, began to demand equal rights with men. In the United States, Britain, and other countries, women changed long-standing ideas. They demanded the right to vote. And I'm gonna read linking past and present. Women in the workforce. The Industrial Revolution brought jobs to women in Great Britain and the United States, but at, great, but at a cost for some. Even though those women gained independence through employment, many were forced to work long hours in bad conditions for little pay. Safety issues were often overlooked and pollutants and dangerous machines caused health problems. More women uh, than men are entering college and universities in Great Britain and the United States. Women can build successful careers in most industries. However, in some countries, many women still work in factories under poor conditions. Okay. New political ideas. The Industrial Revolution brought many changes, both good and bad. Starting in the 1800s, people looked for ways to understand issues and solve the problems that the industry created. A number of different ideas developed to address these concerns. What is liberalism? Uh, one of these new ideas was liberalism. Liberalism is a political philosophy based on the ideas of the Enlightenment. The word liberal had a different meaning in the 1800s than it does today in the United States. Liberals today uh, agree with uh, liberals today agree with the liberals of the 1800s about some ideas, but disagree on others. Earlier, you read about conservatives in the 1800s and how they uh, they too believed different things than conservatives do today. Liberals in the 1800s believed that all people have basic rights. That these include equity before the law and freedom of speech and press. Many liberals wanted freedom of religion. Liberals also believed. Uh, that the power of government should be written, sh sh the government should be limited by written constitutions that directed assemblies uh, should make laws. Liberals did not believe that everyone should be allowed to vote. Most thought that this right should be restricted to men who own property. Liberalism was popular among the new middle class. Middle class people believed that the government should not interfere with business or society. British economist Adam Smith defended the idea and argued that the, if government stayed out of the economy and let business complete, compete, it would lead to more prosperity and a better society. This became known as a laissez-faire, a French word meaning let it be. Two British thinkers, however, wanted to use government to make society better. John, uh, Jonathan Bentham and John Stuart Mill were utilitarians. They believed that society should promote the greatest happiness for the most people. Utilitarianism endorses the ideas like full rights for women, better education, and improved health services. Okay, primary source, the Communist Manifesto. In outlining their plan for society, Karl Marx and his friend Frederick Engels urged the working class to unite. In short, communists everywhere support revolutionary movement against the existing society and political order of things. The communists disdain to conceal their views and aims. They openly declare the, uh, that the ends can be attained only by forcible overthrow of the existing social conditions and letting the ruling classes tremble at the communist revolution. The proletarians have nothing to lose but their chains. They will have, uh, they have a world to win. Working men of all countries unite. What is Marxism? Another social idea of the 1800s was socialism. Socialists believed that factories, land, capital, and raw materials, what are called the means of production, should be owned and controlled by society through the government. Many people developed the ideas of socialism, but the most important person was a German writer named Karl Marx. Marx was a German thinker who lived in the 1800s. Marx believed that the uh, competition among social classes harmed society. He predicted that over time, the working class, what he called the proletariat, would rise up and, and create a communist society. Under communism, social classes would end and the people would live in a classless society. Marx's ideas 
uh, later called Marxism, were very influential. His ideas were the basics basic idea of the socialist political parties in Germany, Britain, Scandinavia, and other countries. These political parties fa uh, favored government control and industry. Another response to, this response to the horrors of factory life was the growth in labor unions. A labor union is an association of workers who unite to improve wages and working conditions. Strikes or work stoppages often force owners to bargain with union leaders. In many European countries, unions supported, uh, uh, supported socialist political parties. New, idea, new art and literature. The rise of industry changed how people lived and worked. They also, it also led to new movements in art, literature, and music. The often ugly face of a new industrialized world caused some artists to turn away from it. Others, however, chose to portray it. Romanticism and Realism. In the late 1700s, artists and writers known as Romantics began to react against the Enlightenment. Instead of reason, their movement called, the, uh, called Romanticism valued feelings, and the imagination is the best, best way to find the truth. Poets such as British, uh, such as Britain's Williams Wordsworth and Germany's Johann van Gogh looked to the past the and the usual and hmm, look to the past and the you and the usual as their sub and the unusual as their subjects it was tough for me to read in their works the writers tended to express the inner feelings about life romantic painters such as eugene de croix of france also chose strange and unusual subjects the first great romantic musician was Ludwig von Beethoven. The German composer's music expressed strong emotions and intense drama. By the mid-1800s, another movement, realism, took hold. Some artists turned away from the romantic expression of feelings. These writers and painters, known as realists, tried to show life as it truly was. Uh, novelists like Charles Dickens of Great Britain, uh, Honor de Balzac, of uh, France and Leo Tolstoy of Russia focused on the ordinary people and settings. They used details to create a picture of life. Painters like Gustave uh, Corbet, Corbet? Yeah, Corbet also showed figures and scenes in ordinary life. While romantics tried to escape the industrial society, realists chose to examine it closely. Modernism and Impressionism. Two other movements appeared later in the 1800s. One was modernism. An important part of modernism was a study of social problems. Novelists such as Emile Zola of France and Theodore Desir of the United States and dramatist Henrik Eisben of Norway explored the social issues of the day. Subjects included crime, alcohol, and women's rights. Other modernists took a different approach. Symbolist poets uh, believed that the outer world was only a reflection of the inner uh, individual's inner reality. They studied dreams and symbols for meaning and used them in their works. A modernist movement in painting uh, became, uh, was called Impressionism. Beginning in 1870, impression, and beginning in the 1870s, Impressionists were especially interested in the effect of light uh, on different outdoor objects and surfaces. The most famous Impressionists were French, they were Claude Monet, Pierre uh, Auguste Renoir, and Edward Degas. Mary Cassatt of the United States was also a famous Impressionist painter. Composers such as Francis Claude Dubasset even translated the Impressionist ideas into dreaming, shimmering music. Okay, science and medicine. During the 1800s, Scientists took many important steps forward. Their work brought many practical benefits to society uh, in the fields of medicine and health. It, was also, it also enabled people to better understand the world. Why was Pasteur important? One of the most important medical advances was the discovery of vaccine to ward off disease. In 1796, English doctor uh, Edward Jenny noticed that the dairy workers who caught cowpox 
did not get the deadly smallpox. Jenner believed that vaccinating or injecting people with cowpox would make them immune to smallpox. Jenny, Jenner's theory was proven correct. It took a while, however, for the vaccination process to become explained. Finally, in 1868, French chemist Louis Pasteur uh, discovered bacteria or germs. He also proved that they caused disease. Pasteur showed that killing bacteria could prevent many diseases. Early surgery was a gruesome process. The discovery of anesthesia or pain deadening drugs such as ether was a great step forward. So were methods developed by Englishman John Lister to sterilize medical equipment. Before Lister, many patients died uh, after surgery due to infection. An Austrian monk named Gregor Mendel was responsible for, the key, for a key breakthrough. In the 1860s, he, his work with pea plants finally solved an, an ancient mystery to predict which characteristics of traits got passed from the next generation. Based on his observations, Mendel discovered uh, the system of rules that could predict whether a living organism would inherit traits from its parents. Mendel's ideas became very influential and he is known today as the, fa as the father of the science called genetics. Einstein and physics. By the end of the 1800s, the ideas of the physical sciences or physics changed the way people understand the world. Atomic theory is the idea that everything is made up of tiny particles called atoms. Scientists gradually learned more about atoms, including uh, the composition of the different elements and the quantities of x-rays and electricity. They learned that atoms are composed of even smaller individual particles. A Polish scientist, Marie, um, Marie Curie, and her French husband, Pierre Curie, discovered the element radium in 1898. Radium is radioactive, which means it gives off energy. Within a few years, a German scientist named Albert Einstein caused a revolution in people's thinking about the universe. Previously, uh, you learned that people during the 1600s came to believe the universe was a well-run machine that obeyed natural laws. In 1905, however, Albert Einstein overturned these long-held ideas of time, space, mass, and motion. His theory of relativity stated that space and time were relatively were relative and changing and, ra and rather than permanent and unchanging. As a result, Einstein's theory, uh, people, uh, as a result of Einstein's theory, people were able to imagine a more fluid, unstructured view of reality. Einstein also developed a famous equation, E equals MC squared, where E is energy, M is mass, and C is the speed of light. The equation shows that all physical things contain vast amounts of energy. Using these ideas, scientists eventually created the atomic bomb and nuclear reactions. I'm now going to read major scientific discoveries. In 1803, John Dalton, elements are composed of atoms. Impact, provided proof to support the atomic theory. In 1820s, Mary Anning, uh, fossils of dinosaurs, including Plesiosaurus. Impact, help scientists learn more about the uh, Jurassic period of history. Okay, fun fact. She sells seashells by the seashore is referring to Mary Anning selling the dinosaurs. It weren't, of course, seashells, but she did get them out of the sea, which is where that came from. So she, that whole poem about she sells, she sells by the seashore, that tongue twister, it literally, there is a she and her name is Mary Anning. Anyway, 1850s, Louis Pasteur, disease causing bacteria, allowed for doctors to fight disease more easily. 1859, Charles Darwin, all living things evolve as their environment changes. Okay. Impact, question whether mankind originated from God or nature. 1890s, William Rothagen, he discovered x-rays, allowed doctors to see people's bones from the inside. In 1890, Ivan Pavlov, actions are unconscious reactions. That's what he discovered. And the impact is that determined that through training, any action can be learned. 1898, Marie and Pierre uh, Curie, the element radium within the atoms, and they proved that atoms were active. 1900, Max Planck, he discovered that energy is not continuous. Impact, it influenced the study of the atom. 1905, Albert Einstein, the theory of rel relativity led to the development of the atomic bomb, among other things.
finally, Nettie Stevens in 1905, that the X and Y chromosomes deserve, determine gender. This led to the advanced study of human genetic material. Okay. Biography, Albert Einstein and Marie Skolwaska. I've actually never heard that pronounced. Curie, she's just known as Mary Curie. Don't worry about the middle name. In the 1800s and 1900s, both Albert Einstein and Mary Curie helped to advance the science. Albert Einstein was born on March 14, 1879 in Luttenberg, Germany. He grew up in Munich in a Jewish family. Einstein became a teacher and then worked in a patent office in Switzerland. Einstein earned many awards for his scientific theories, including the Nobel Prize in Physics. Einstein uh, fled Nazi Germany and moved to the United States in 1933. Although his famous equation E equals MC squared helped to advance scientific knowledge, he was bothered by the fact it also made the atomic bomb possible. Later in his life, he began urging nations to give up nuclear weapons. He died in April 18, 1955 in Princeton, New Jersey. Mary Curie was born, Mary Sladowska, in Warsaw, Poland in 1867. She graduated from high school at the age of 15, then attended classes at the Floating University, an illegal night school forbidden by Polish Russian rulers. Why was it forbidden? Because she was a woman and they weren't supposed to be teaching women. Okay. When Maria <coughs> enrolled at the Sorbonne University in Paris in 1891, she became known as, Mir as, as Marie. There, she met Pierre Curie. They were married in 1895 and had two daughters. She earned her doctorate in 1903. When Pierre died uh, in an accident in 1806, Marie took his position teaching and researching at the Sorbonne. During World War I, she used X-ray units to help do doctors treat wounds. She also helped discover, uh, helped to create the Curie Foundation in 1920 to advance science and medicine. Twice, she was awarded the Nobel Prize in physics. Marie died July 4th, 1934, in France. Okay. Who was Charles Darwin? Like many others, Charles Darwin wondered why uh, there would be so many different kinds of life in the world. His research led him to, the conclusion, to a conclusion. Plants and animals change very slowly over time. The ones that survive do so because they are better adapted to their environment. They win the, quote, battle, unquote, for survival and produce offspring. The offspring then have the same characteristics that help the plant adapt. Darwin also believed that humans developed from animal species. His ideas were and remain controversial. Some religious, uh, some religious people believe that his theories contradict the biblical story of creation. Others believe it opened the door to a world without morals. Many people, however, came to accept Darwin's theories. Some people believe that Darwin's idea about competition between the species applied to society as well. This idea, called social Darwinism, was popular with those who supported the laissez-faire economics. Why? They believed that different individuals and companies uh, engaged in economic competition, just like species. Weaker ones would fail, and the stronger ones would prosper. <laughs>